Hi YouTube, welcome to Pagan Perspective. This is Megan, aka Sabirisri, and today we are supposed to be reacting to this video series thing by this chick, um, Carol Kornacki, about exposing witchcraft, which I've watched a few, just a little bit of the other uh, hosts' videos this week, and in general, it does not seem like people are liking these 15 videos or whatever. I'm probably not going to watch them all based on that. But what I thought I would do is actually give you a real life, real time, because I haven't watched them yet. And in fact, I started watching one. I only got about 10 seconds in. And then I'm like, wait a minute, why am I watching this and reacting to it and not filming it for you? So if this is supposed to be a reactionary video, let me just watch it and react. So I'm probably going to skip ahead just because I, you know, I really don't want uh, the timing of it to be, you know, too long or anything like that. So here we go. I'm going to react. Oh, is it going to play? Hmm. Okay. Exposing witchcraft in the Anonic occult. I've had a lacking experience. I spent six years of my life practicing witchcraft. I spent six years of my life involved in spiritualism and mediumship and channeling and Buddhism. And well, those are all different things. So, did you and spend six years in one together. or six years in all of them I together? So, you only got a little bit of each? So, I began to follow after the supernatural. And that's how I got involved in the list I just made for you. Okay. I wanted to be accepted and I wanted to have power because I saw that people who were involved in the things I did. Wow, why are you yelling at me? Don't tell your kids that there's no power in the devil. Well, there, there isn't. No power in the devil. No, that's you not true. You don't get inside Hitler and kill six million Jews because you don't have any power. You don't get inside okay. Judas and get him to betray the son of the living God for 30 per pieces of silver because you're stupid and because you're Okay, but if you were a witch and a Buddhist for all this time, why are you quoting things in the Bible as things that, you know, really happened? When Moses went before Pharaoh, and the Lord moved in changing the rod into a serpent and did so... Okay, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's just, yeah. So first off... What this lady is clearly talking about here is how to dissuade people from becoming pagan. I mean, she's clearly a super fundamentalist Christian who is going, okay, the Bible must be taken literally, word for word, exactly how it's written, regardless of the fact that it's supposed to be more symbolic, regardless of the fact that it has to be taken into the context and the time period in which it was written. No, we must take it entirely word for word, exactly this way. Hey, if that's your deal, great, that's awesome. But you know what? When you start making up lies about my faith, we're going to have a little bit of a problem. So first off, she's just completely incorrect. And my guess is that this is going to kind of continue on this whole way. I'm really wondering when she's going to stop yelling at me. I feel kind of bad for the people in the audience. I mean, clearly it's a large room and she's screaming at the top of her lungs. And it's, it's not just projection. I mean, I was in theater. I know how to project and she's not. She's yelling at these people. I, I mean... Ooh, she's mad for some reason, but why? I don't know. I, clearly, whatever that was going on with her, she's having a having a day. It's is not her best day ever. Okay, let's skip ahead a little bit and let's see. Um, where are we here? In America, we got a boy that was is in the court system right now that we're trying with the death penalty. We're trying him as an adult who took his neighbor's son. How many read about that? Give us a red here in the glasses beat him, and said he enjoyed watching him die. He says he was reading Stephen King books. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay. So apparently she is saying that, you know, being redheaded and reading Stephen King is somehow going to make you a sociopath. Interesting. Interesting theory. Not backed up by any scientific evidence, however. But, you know, I mean, I guess it works for the crowd she's talking to 
but uh, not quite for me. So yeah, that kid don't even know that whole situation, but I can tell you right now that anybody who talks about and killing somebody and enjoying it, that is, I mean, those are symptoms of antisocial personality disorder, sociopath. That's classic symptoms. Most homicidal killers, most multiple, multiple homicidal offenders are sociopaths. It's just the way it is. You almost have to be in order to do that. The only people who wouldn't be are people like religious zealots who are doing it for a different cause, a different reason. And generally speaking, they are killing people in mass. But if you're looking at somebody who is a true serial killer, who's seeking out individuals to kill at separate times, but usually have a, a particular MO, particular way of doing it, you know, we're talking about Ted Bundy here, things like that, you're looking at sociopaths. It's just the way it is. Let's uh, skip to the next one, shall we? I mean, I don't know if I really want to, but. Pretend. And let's start out with what God says before I get on my own tangent here. Oh, okay. And see is the ultimate authority. Deuteronomy oh, oh. 18 10. Okay. Well, let's skip ahead of that. Basically, a lot of them overseas as well as here. Now, the first thing we need to understand is where was the first signs of Satanism in the Bible? Where were the absolute first signs of warnings that something different was going on that should be going on? Hmm. Where did man make the decision not to give all You're of yelling again. to the Creator? In the 10th chapter of Genesis, mm -hmm. you will find the story of Nimrod. In that chapter, mm -hmm. it says that Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. And most people think that that means that he was a really nice guy. No, it doesn't. Nimrod was against God. He came against God. He told men that their happiness did not come from God This is where we get the God term, like, you're such a Nimrod. Him, hmm. And he set up sun worship. They say that the Tower of Babel that was built in his time, at the very top of it were all the signs of the Zodiac, all astrological signs. And Nimrod taught people... Don't worship the creator. Worship the created thing. Worship the sun, the stars, the moon, the wind, fire. Don't worship him who created these things, but worship the things that have been created. Okay, so big problem here. So as most of you who watch this channel probably know, that basically when you worship the sun, when you worship the moon, when you worship wind, water, the elements, you are not worshiping the thing. You're not worshiping the piece of stone that is orbiting earth. You're, you're not. You, you are taking the symbolism of the moon. The moon is the symbol of the goddess on earth. The sun is the symbol for the god on earth. So wind and water, those symbolically represent the element. Now, in the case of wind and water, they also are the elements. So not only are they symbolically representing all of the elements, so all the water everywhere, but they're also intrinsically of themselves the actual element. So her whole thing right now, where she's trying to basically just say that all witches are devil worshipers, I mean, come on. It, I mean, it's so been done. Been there, done that, over it. Yeah, kind of just getting annoyed at this point. All right, let's move on to the next one. Because I just don't need to see that. I had cobra candles. Richard and I had cobra candles written on pewter dishes and stuff, and really expensive stuff, which his mm. mother has bought, had bought for us when I was in the occult. Really, really, she just went out and bought the mm. stuff. Well, this woman walked in, and she looked around, and she said, now, innocent stuff, like, like a pewter cup with my name on it, with the name of my spirit guide, so-called, on it, mm. and my astrological sign. You didn't think anything was wrong with that. It was just a pewter cup. Mm. She said to me, why do you have this in your house? What are you going to do with this? I said, I don't know. Is there anything wrong with it? She said, Carol, why would you want any of that in your house? Garbage bag, man. I just garbage bagged it all. I'll bet you Richard and I threw out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Ooh, that's a something. lot of hundreds. Ain't no money, ain't no price tag that's going to let the devil in my house Oh. I don't care how long it's been in the wow. Family. Oh my gosh. Okay. So if, if you've watched me before, you know that I, I got to tell a story on one of my previous videos about a roommate of mine who uh, 
who said, I brought the devil in the room because I watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Well, this is pretty akin to that. She's saying that a pewter mug, pewter glass that she had, right, that had her zodiac sign on it, her zodiac sign, was bringing the devil into the room. Oh my goodness, no. Okay, come on. This is, th I mean, really? Is this even worth watching? Like who, I I'm sorry, but if you even know the slightest bit about paganism, the slightest bit about witchcraft, you would know that this entire thing that she is talking about is complete hogwash. It is hate. It is complete intolerance. It is misinformation. It is scare tactics. Uh, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. All right, we're moving on. Next one. I mean, just like do like two minutes of each one or something. Mm, what's the next one? What do we got in this one? Enemy, you won't lose. Mm -hmm. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, there is connections to these things. Mm -hmm. And I could go on and on. Really? You could have. You need as a church to go ahead and clean house you teenagers with all these trashy cds and mm. tapes in the house that are rotting your brains and making these unsaved men and women richer than you could ever imagine your wildest dreams it's time what? to get the trash out of your house if they don't worship your god who is their god what does light have to do with darkness why are you being entertained by them of what good or what worth can they be to you other than they love your money. Mm. So it's time for us as children of the king to go home and to look at what we're decorating with. Jewelry amazes me. Now, help me with this so I can show, so I can show them. You got a, you got a lot of aquanet going on there in your hair. I don't know what jewelry you're wearing, but. Oh, we're drawing now. What are we drawing? Remember I said he's so subtle? He just, he amazes me sometimes. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. That's a cute peace sign. It's broken. <laughs> the circle should be broken. Okay. But anyway. It's a peace sign. Peace sign. Peace. Peace. It was big in the 60s. Actually, it's not a peace sign. It is just a. This thing is used in witchcraft. It's not the bot. It's not it's used in witchcraft. It's not Christianity to enter into the work of the devil or to enter into his dark kingdom. Okay. Okay. So she didn't draw the peace sign. She actually just draw a. a three bisects, so she had a circle, and then she drew basically lines that trisected the circle into three equal parts. So she's missing the bottom line of the peace sign. So now, here's the thing. If she's trying to draw something that represents three, then okay, sure, maybe that's used in some occult stuff, and maybe whoever she talked to who gave her completely wrong information, uh, maybe couldn't draw a triquatra, and, and that's what they ended up drawing. But, and so I get the symbology of the three, but, but here's the reality. The symbology of the three isn't just in witchcraft. Hello, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right? Symbology of three is throughout the entire universe. That is, it's the essential. It is the pyramid. It, it's, it's an essential truth of the universe. So if she's trying to say that an essential three is just an occult thing, well, you know, I... Well, I, you already know what I think of her, so. All right, let's move on. Next. Sorry, I guess it's going to take a little you while to load. You hear the human beings screaming for mercy all around the villages. Oh. This was an offering to the god Sam Hayen. <gasps> oh, she did not. Oh, she did not. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Did we just all hear that? Sam Hayen? To the god Sam Hayen. Oh my. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't even. I can't even go there. All right. All right. Samhain is. <laughs> I can't. I, why, why are we. Uh, Samhain is not a person. Okay. Samhain is a time of the year <laughs> that we celebrate our holiday and celebrate our ancestors and celebrate the dead and it falls you know right on and around Halloween okay you know what I can't even dignify this Sam Hayen all right what that says to me and actually this is this answers a lot what this says to me is that she actually doesn't know 
diddly squat. That what she did was she went on Google and went on the internet and started looking up a bunch of stuff and piecing together things that would sound sensationalist so that she could then go preach to her televangelist people. Well, I, I wouldn't even call it preaching. I'd call it screaming and yelling at them. And so she read the word, the, you know, old Celtic word, Samhain. And yes, it is spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but anybody who has spent any time actually face-to-face -face with pagans and witches would know that it's pronounced Samhain and not Samhain. But if all you're doing is looking up a bunch of junk on the internet, not validating, not talking to anybody, not mentoring, not watching actual videos from actual pagans and witches, yeah, I can see how you would mess up that name. Sure, this makes a lot of sense. So she garnered a lot of information off the internet and maybe in a few books, depending on when this came out. And yeah, is trying to use her scare tactics. Wow. Whew. Classy lady. All right, let's move on to the next one, shall we? Chicago, Dwight Thompson, you've been in some of the major cities. What I have observed is the good are losing. They're desensitized. They're cold. Except for those, of course, I'm sure you're sitting here going, I'm not desensitized, Carol Panetti. I love God. Yes, there are those too. The majority of the kids in the earth are losing them. You realize our kids are killing babies. Do you realize what I'm saying? To you? Those boys took that baby. I, I'm still. I just heard this yesterday, so it's fresh in my mind. I know y'all been reading it for months. I didn't know that, Debbie, because Nancy told me at her house yesterday about this. I said, Debbie, we've lost our children. We got an MTV generation. <laughs> wow, when was this done? I mean, here's the thing. This was uploaded in 2008, okay? But she looks like she's from, like, like 1982. Seriously, I have no idea when this was from, but my gosh, the woman, MTV generation? Oh, goodness, my gracious. I, I mean, ugh. All right. I don't know how many more of these I actually want to watch. You know, well, let's skip ahead. Let's skip ahead. How does she close it? Let's see how she ends this thing. Let's, what are her closing remarks? What am I doing here? What is oh, this? Oh, she's crying. Convinced her. Oh, no. Don't she's just whining. mess with your mind. Don't mess with your mind. Don't let anybody hypnotize you. Do you know what hypnotism is? Yeah. It Do is you? giving your will... To that person who's hypnotizing you. Mm. You're giving them your will, you're saying. That's why people act like chickens. You see somebody, will hypnotize them. They'll get up and do things they would never do, very shy, and they'll start acting like a chicken or doing something oh, silly. Just, all right. Make a closing Nobody's remark. Nobody's going to control Ooh, she's going like this. Will, except the very, Son of very God and the Spirit of God. Watch your mind. And by the way, in her exposing witchcraft thing, her little ending piece here, watch your mind is her big last message. But um, she actually has an inverted pentacle, which I think is interesting. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, so that uh, was a wasted 18 minutes of my life. Okay. Yeah. Don't bother watching it. Frank, I mean, unless you want to laugh. And unless you really want to be annoyed and yelled at um, for, like, a large chunk of time, don't watch it. It's not worth it. You really don't need to put yourself through that. I don't know why we do this to ourselves. Why, why do we go and watch The Intolerance and Hate? We had such a horrible thing happen this week in our, our community. And I, and I say our community because I I take the, my pagan community as well as my LGBT family as one whole community because it's it's not mainstream it's not the average we are a minority and the shooting that happened in Orlando it exemplifies the hate 
that still exists in our country and in our world. And watching this video, it just shows me that there is just so much blind hate left and so much misinformation and it's just allowed to keep continuing. And you know what? We don't need it. We don't need it. Don't watch it. Don't bring it into your life. Spread love as far as you can. And when people come up to you and say, well, you must worship the devil, you know, or you do that. You think you worship a goddess, but you really worship the devil. You know, roll your eyes and say, you know what? Do you really want to have this conversation with me? Do you really want to know? Or do you just want to spout this hate at me? Right? Because if, if, if that's all they want to do, then there's really no point. Don't waste your breath because you're not going to convince them otherwise. But if they really want to know, just ask them. Say, is this a conversation? Can we have a real honest conversation about this? And I can truly tell you what it's about. And if they say yes, then great. Then spread that love, spread that message. But if not, don't waste your time because honestly, you don't need that negativity in your life. None of us need that t negativity. And right now, we should be joining together with each other in love and holding that sacred space for all of us together and not dealing with all of these people who really are just such a drain on this world that it, it just makes me so sad. So that's my reaction to the video, guys. I hope that you have an amazing week. If you're in the New England area, come out to Mutton and Mead. It is the last Renaissance Fair I will be doing in New England because in July, right after the 4th of July, I move to Maui. So, and I start a whole new life there. So I hope that all of you guys are well and are safe and take care. And as always, guys, blessed be.